Welcome to session four of UGBS 301. We shall continue with our linear programming. In the previous session, we looked at the graphical solution for linear programming and also how the formulation was done. In this session, we shall concern ourselves with how to use the Microsoft Excel to provide a solution to the linear programming problem. So at the end of the session, you should be able to understand the computer solution of linear programming and then how to interpret the computer generated outputs. These are your reading lists and we have an example for us to move with. So we have a phone dealer who is interested in making new orders for phones types that is Nokia and then Samsung and LG. The unit profits for Nokia, Samsung, and LG are 100, 300, and then 50 CDs respectively. The phones are kept in a specialized protective container of 10.1 square meters to prevent cracks and other malfunctions from vibration. And Nokia, Samsung, and LG take storage space of 0 0.05, 0 0.1, and then 0 0.05 square meters respectively. And if a Samsung, Nokia, and LG cost 300, 1,200, and 120 CDs respectively, and the dealer has available 93,000 CDs to spend, what should be the optimal mix of phone types to purchase and achieve the maximum profit possible? So in this same vein, we are going to look at how to formulate this linear programming problem. And as you are aware, this is a linear programming problem because we have an objective of maximizing our profits as well as we have some level or some number of constraints. The first constraint we are concerned ourselves with is the storage space constraint and then the capital constraints. So, in forming our decision variables, you are going to say that let x1, x2, and then x3 represent the number of Nokia, Samsung, and then LG phones to buy respectively. Therefore, we have that x1 is for the number of Nokia phones, x2 is the number of Samsung phones, and then x3 is the number of LG phones. And as you can see from the question, we said that unit profit for Nokia is 100 CDs, unit profit for Samsung is 300 CDs, and the unit profit for LG is 50 CDs. So you can see that present here within the objective function, which says unit profit for Nokia 400, unit profit for Samsung 300, and then the unit profit for LG which is 15. And it is subject to these constraints. Now, if you look at the space constraint, you will see that 0 0.05, 0 0.05 square meters is for a single Nokia phone. And then a Samsung phone takes 0 0.1 square meter of space. And then an LG phone takes 0 0.05 square meter of space. Therefore, the space allocated to Nokia phones, and then the space allocated to Samsung phones, and the space allocated to LG phones should not exceed 10.1 square meters. Likewise, if a phone, a Nokia phone would cost us 300, a Samsung will cost us 1,200, and then an LG phone will cost us 120 CDs. We expect that here will be 300, not 30, 300 x1 plus 1200 x2 plus 120 x3. And this should be less or equal to 9300. So in getting the Excel solution, what we intend doing is that we set up an Excel, an Excel, let's say an Excel table, or we have an Excel opened, Microsoft Excel opened for us, where we are going to put in each of the values 
of the objective function. For instance, we have the number of Nokia, that is x1, the number of Samsung, that is x2, and then the number of LG, that is x3, to be purchased. And to start with, our order size here is giving us the amount of Nokia, Samsung, and LG to purchase. So we would initialize this to zero. This 94, 54, and zero will first be initialized to zero. In fact, at the end of the solution, we know we would get x1 to be 94, x2 to be 54, and x3 to be zero. But then, before we even start, we assume that we've not produced anything. Therefore, other size for Nokia will be zero. Other size for Samsung will be zero. And then other size for LG will be zero. Now, each of them has a unit profit of 100. That is for Nokia. A unit profit of 300 for Samsung. And a unit profit of 50 for LG. Now, this shaded portion in green, in light green here, tells us that this part is the total profit, which is actually this value 100 times this value here, which is initialized to be zero, then plus this value times the value here also initialized to be zero, and then this 50 times the value over here. Now in Excel, we are going to use the cell references. In your recommended textbooks and on YouTube and other videos, you will be able to see clearly how the Excel solution is done. Now we also look at the one for the constraints, and we see that each of the constraint values are given here. So the 0.05x1, the 0.1 for x2, and then 0.05 for x3 is also given. In the same way, we have the capital constraint 300 for x1, 1,200 for x2, and then 120 for x3 is also given. Now, this is less or equal to 10.1, and this is less or equal to 93,000. After everything has been solved, this gives will be your final value. In Excel, you invoke what we call solver. Solver could be found in the data tab on the top right corner of your Excel book. And you see solver. And when you click solver, you'll be able to see these parameters. They would ask you where your objective cell is. They'll ask you whether you are maximizing or minimizing, and then subject to what constraints. If you read your recommended text, you will see more about the computer solution. Now, what we are most interested in here is the computer-generated output and how the interpretation is done. We know that at the end of the, of the formulation, our program or our computer program will give us some answers and then some other additional things that we need to look at. But the question is, what is the significance of these things? So that is what we want to look at. That is, we want to know how to interpret this computer-generated output. So once you run the model, you see that you would have two answers or two answer sheets appearing. One is what we call the answer report, and then we also have the sensitivity report. The answer report is not as detailed as the sensitivity report, and it gives you a general overview as to how your level of production or your level of purchase should be. So for the answer report, you see that our total profit is given as 25,600. And the final values are such that we need to produce 94 of Nokia, or we need to order 94 of the Nokia phones, and then 54 of the Samsung phones, and zero of the LG phones in order to maximize our profit whilst meeting our constraints. 
So we look at the final values of the cells within the objective cell and then the variable cell. So whilst the objective cell gives you an idea of the total profit, the variable cells give you an idea of how much or how many of each of the decision variables to purchase in order to maximize our profit. So we have a total profit of 25,600 and it is coming because we are ordering 94 of the Nokia phones and then 54 of the Samsung phones. We realize that our constraints are not binding because our cell value and then our right hand side values would be the same. If we were to put in the values of x1, x2, and x3 back into our constraint inequalities, you realize that the right hand side values and the left hand side values are the same, and therefore there will be no slack, that is, there will be no unused. Um, amount, there will be no unused storage space, there will be no unused capital amount. Therefore, our status are binding for the storage space constraints and it's also binding for the capital constraints. Now, with this sensitivity report provides a more detailed solution to the problem. It gives you more information and it provides information that relates to changing objective function coefficient for a variable and then forcing a variable which is currently zero to be non-zero. Also, it contains information that relates to changing the right-hand side of a constraint. So we are going to take each of these one after the other and we are going to see the significance of each of them. Okay. So what is sensitivity analysis? Sensitivity analysis determines the effect of the optimal changes or the optimal solution of changes in the parameter values of the objective function and constraint equations. For example, we want to ask ourselves, what if the profit for Nokia changes from, say, 100 to, say, 400 CDs? what would be the effect of the objective function? What would be the effect of the optimal solution? What would be the effect on the total profit? What would be the effect when, say, we have extra maybe about 1,000 um, CDs given to us to add to our capital? How would it change our solution? These are the kind of questions we want to ask ourselves, and these are the kind of solutions or the answers that this sensitivity report would give us. Okay, so suppose we vary the coefficient of Samsung in the objective function. What will be the, how will the linear programming optimal solution change? Remember that when I say optimal solution, I'm speaking in respect of the 94 other sites for Nokia, the 54 other sites for Samsung, and the zero other size for LG. So the first question we need to ask ourselves, now suppose we vary the coefficient of Samsung in the objective function, how would the solution change? We realize that we have something we call allowable increase and then allowable decrease. Now what this allowable increase does is that for Nokia, we have an allowable increase of 50, and then we have an allowable decrease of 12.5. This tells us that we can increase the objective coefficient for Nokia phones up to 50. That means we can increase from 100 to 150. And holding all other variables constant, you will still be required to produce 94 or other 94 Nokia phones and 54 Samsung phones and then no LG phones to maximize your profit. In other words, if you increase your objective coefficient or if you increase your profit of phones by say 20 or increase it up to 120, this final value solution will not change. Similarly, it has an allowable decrease of 12.5, which tells you that 
we can decrease this from 100, we can decrease it by 12.5 up to say 87.5 CDs and still this solution will not change. So a question can be posed to you. What will happen to your objective or what will happen to your optimal solution if the profit for funds is increased up to say 130 CDs? If profit for fund is increased to 130 CDs, it means that it's increased by 30 CDs, which is still within the allowable increase. And since it is within the allowable increase, our final value will not change. We can do the same for that of Samsung. Samsung has an allowable increase of 66.67 and an allowable decrease of 100. This tells us that we can reduce the size or the profit for Samsung by a maximum of 100, and within that range, our size or our final value will still remain the same. Or we can increase from 300 to about 366.67 CDs, and our objective or our final optimal solution will still remain the same. So, back to our question. Suppose we vary the coefficient of Samsung in the objective function. How will the linear programming optimal solution change? And as long as the unit profit of Samsung lies within the allowable increase and then the allowable decrease, so you have the lower bound will be 300 minus 100, which is the allowable decrease, and then 300 for Samsung plus 66.67, which is our allowable increase. The values of the variables in the linear or the optimal linear programming solution will remain unchanged. However, a note of caution, although the solution will not change, the optimum, the objective value will change because the coefficient of the objective values are changing which means that if this one changes from say 100, if this one changes from 100 to say 130, it wouldn't affect the final value in any way. But because the objective coefficient has changed, it's going to change the total profit. That means your total profit could change, but you'll still be required to order 94, 54, and then zero of the LGs to maximize your profit. Now you can see that LG has an allowable decrease of 1E30. In Excel, 1E30 represents infinity. So it means that no matter how much you reduce the value of Samsung, no matter how you reduce the profit for Samsung, the solution would not change. The solution would not change. So we are also effectively saying that the decision to produce 94 of Nokia and 54 of Samsung remains optimal even if the profit per unit from Samsung is not actually 300, but lies in the range of 233.3 to 366.67. And you can draw similar conclusions to that of Nokia and LG. Let's look at another column within a report called reduced cost. Reduce cost. So reduced cost gives us for each variable, which is currently zero, an estimate of how much the objective function would change if we force that variable to be non-zero. In other words, reduced cost for Nokia is zero, as you can see. Reduced cost for Samsung is also zero. And then reduced cost for LG is negative 20. The question is why? Reduced cost for Nokia and Samsung are zero because we believe that it is profitable to produce Nokia or to purchase Nokia and Samsung at these prices. That is why you see that because it is profitable, the problem gave us values for their final values. 
And because it is wasn't profitable to produce LG, the problem or the program returned that LG be equal to zero. A reduced cost of 20, negative 20, means that, therefore, for every LG phone that we would order, we are going to forego a profit of 20 cities. But for every Nokia or every Samsung phone that we order, we will not forego any profit. This tells us that it is not profitable to sell LG at 50 cities or to have a profit of LG at 50 cities because if you do so, you are going to forego a profit of 20 cities for every LG phone that you will sell. Therefore, the reduced cost is more like an opportunity cost for the variable. In fact, when it is negative or if you are doing a maximization problem, the reduced cost is either zero or negative. If it's a minimization problem, reduced cost is either zero or positive. We expect that for something to be profitable, the reduced cost would always be zero. Therefore, what can we do to LG so that we have a positive value at where the zero is, and then we would have a zero reduced cost? To do that, what it means is that our objective coefficient for LG should go beyond from 50 to something beyond 70. Why are we saying 70? Because we are having 50 plus the absolute value of the reduced cost. Now, once the objective coefficient for LG goes beyond 70, let's say 71, or even 70.1, or even 70.01, or 70.02, you realize that the final value column here would have a positive value, and then there will be no negative value here at the reduced cost, which will tell us that it is profitable for us to order LG now. But as it stands now, it is not profitable for us to order LG, but it's profitable for us to order Nokia and then Samsung. So referring back to our original solution, the profit per unit on LG would need to increase by 20 CDs before it will be profitable to order any LG phone, as previously explained. We would also want to look at the side of the constraint that we've already discussed the things under the variable cells. We also want to consider the stuff here under the constraint cells. So in the constraint, we also have final value, shadow price, allowable increase, allowable decrease, and then the constraints right hand side. So allowable increase and allowable decrease for the constraint also work in a similar way like that of the objective or the decision variables. For instance, if I say you have an allowable increase of 5.4 for storage amount used, then what I'm saying is that we can increase this we can increase, we can have about 5.4 extra square meters in addition to our 10.1 here, and our solution will not change. In the same way for the allowable decrease. Now, what is of most importance in this point is what we call the shadow price. For each constraint, the column headed shadow price tell us exactly how much the objective function will change if we change the right-hand side of the corresponding constraint within the limits given in the allowable increase and then the allowable decrease columns. Basically, what we are saying is that if we add extra units of resource to what we already have, the shadow price tells us how much our profit would increase. For example, 
if we are able to get about one square meter of space, an additional square meter of space to what we already have, to the 10.1 we already have, it will mean that our profit, our total profit would increase by 1,000 cities. So if we're able to add two additional square meters of space, then our profit would increase by two times 1,000 cities, which is 2,000 cities. So it goes on and on like that. Now, as long as the additional lies within the allowable increase, any units of additional resource that will be added in terms of the storage amount would increase to a proportional increase by a thousand. That means that if you're able to add five extra square meters of space, we are going to increase our profit by five times 1,000, which is 5,000 cities. In the same analysis for the capital constraint. For every unit of capital, extra unit of capital that we add, we are going to increase our objective or our total profit by 0 0.167 cities. That is approximately about 16 pesos. So that is it for the shadow price. So what that we are saying is that provided that the right hand side of the constant of the constraint remain between 10.1 plus 5.4 that is 15.5 and then 7.75 referring to the allowable increase and then the allowable decrease the objective function will be exactly 1000 times the change in the right hand side from 10.1 so it means that if I reduce this space by one square meter, our profit would also reduce by a thousand, just as it would increase for the, if we had increased the space. And the direction of change in the objective function depends on the direction of change in the right hand side of the constraint, and the nature of the objective, that is either we are maximizing or we are minimizing. So. By summary, we are saying that final values within this sensitivity report are the ones that you need to produce to optimize or maximize your profit. Reduced costs are the opportunity costs and telling you how much you need to add to a variable that is not performing, that is in a way a variable that is not so profitable so that you can render it profitable. Then we have allowable increase and then allowable decrease which tells us how the function or how the objective solution will change or the optimal solution will change when you, there are changes in the objective coefficients. For the constraints, the shadow price is one of the most important things to consider and is telling us the increase in the total objective value, which in here is profit per a unit addition of the resource as long as this lies within the allowable increase or the allowable decrease range. So you can take this as, a, as an example and then try to formulate it and solve using the computer solution. We have a dietitian who can produce three types of food supplements, type A, type B, and type C of each food supplement type and it comes in the same size of bag. For one bag of type A, it contains 5 milligrams of nutrient 1, 10 milligrams of nutrient 2, and 5 milligrams of nutrient 3. For a bag of type B, it contains 5 milligrams each of nutrient 1 and nutrient 2, and 10 milligrams of nutrient 3. Type C contains 10 milligrams of nutrient 1, 60 milligrams of nutrient 2, and 30 milligrams of nutrient 3. For a particular patient, the dietitian determines that she needs to combine the bags of food supplement to get at least 1,200 milligrams of nutrient 1, at least 2,000 milligrams of nutrient 2, and at least 2,200 milligrams of nutrient 3. If type A, type B, and type C cost 
three CDs, four CDs, and 10 CDs respectively, how many bags of food supplements of types A, B, and C should she purchase? Assuming that X1, X2, and X3 are the number of bags of type A, type B, and type C respectively to buy. Round your answers to the upper integer. What it means is that in our formulation, we are actually minimizing the cost of food to purchase. We have type A that costs three CDs, type B that costs four CDs, and then type C that costs 10 CDs. But whilst we are minimizing our cost, we want to meet some minimum requirements because we need at least 1,200 milligrams of nutrient one. And because we need at least, that is why our constraint here is greater than or equal to. We need at least 2,000 milligrams of nutrient two. And then we also need at least 2,200 milligrams of nutrient three. So this is the formulation or the linear programming formulation for this problem. And we are required to use the computer solution to solve this problem. I hope you will be able to solve this problem. That ends this session. Thank you.